Holy cow. Do it. Do it. Do it. Okay, we, we go again. We go again. Oh, no. No, 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 no. Don't fall victim to this. Guys, I'm in trouble. Hold, hold. No, 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 hold. Oh, we're in. Oh, no, no, no. That's fine. We're just going back. We're just. Oh, we almost didn't go back. Oh, man. Chib spent like three hours on that jump. Well, Chib didn't have Chib to teach him how to do the jump. So I have a, an unfair advantage. Can you not just go to the ceiling? No, the Grecian marble is too... It's too smooth. I asked my grandfather, who works in masonry, why don't we just make more Grecian marble? He said, we can't. We don't know how to anymore. This 97-year-old Greek mason still makes Ionic columns the old-fashioned way. I'm just asking an honest question. Why did we all learn about the three different types of columns. We all didn't? I mean, I did at my high school in rural Ontario. In history class, they were like, guess what? This is a Dorian pillar. This is an Ionian pillar. I don't even know. Corinthian, that's right. The last one's Corinthian. What kind of dirt does the, the column industry have on the education industry, man? Because it's historical? They're just columns. Like, I don't know what you want me to say. Like, when we learn about Alexander the Great, I'm like, that's, you know, pretty important. That informs the way that, like, the globe looks today. But, like, columns? Wow, it just doesn't seem that important to me, to be honest. If you had some columns at your place, you'd feel differently? Yeah, well, unfortunately, I don't have the interior design sensibilities of Tony Montana, okay? Why not? Because my wife has taste. I don't have taste, but... She has taste. <laughs> At least you have his cocaine habits. It's so funny that there are people out there who think I do cocaine. I don't even know. Did you see that video of Conor McGregor? There were like 14-year-old kids from the Philippines that were like, this guy's obviously on coke. And I was like, how do you know that? I'm so out of the cocaine ecosystem, I don't even know what someone looks like when they're on cocaine. I thought he was just like really excited. Philippines mention. <laughs> I know Michael Caine. I know Coke Zero. True. What do you think someone on cocaine looks like? I mean, I guess I would expect them to be sniffing a lot and maybe licking their lips. But it's tough because that's also something you do when you're sick. What is it? This is a genuine question. Why, when you are sick and you wake up after sleeping, 
Do you have weird Elmer's glue all over your lips? What is that? Is it mucus? Is it is it spit? Is it dried skin? Like wh what is it? It's just you? It's not just me. If this happens to you, press 1 in the chat, please. Thank you. There's dozens of us. If you're sick, or if I'm sick, and I go to bed, and I wake up eight hours later, I have, like, detritus on my lips. It's dehydration and mucus. It's real. Malkovich references it in Con Air. We take those. Drool because your nose is stuffy and you mouth breathe. That makes, that's a great explanation. I don't know if it's true, but it's a great explanation. the virus, the authority on lip mucus. He's a smart guy. Ibuprofen is a better decongestant than actual decongestants. <coughs> I think Tylenol might have been the last great uh, pill that was ever invented. Tylenol actually goes insane. I don't, it's probably invented in like 1897. It helps a fever. It helps a headache. If you have one of them, you can enjoy your day. If you have two of them, you can't feel pain. If you have three of them, your liver will die and you will not wake up. That's how you know it's a medicine. If you'll excuse me. That's how you know it's a medicine that actually works. For cough medicine, they're like fucking just freeball it, man. Take as much as you want. For Tylenol, they're like... Please take one. If you, if you absolutely need to, take two. Under no circumstances ever, take three. kind of goaded. They were cooking when they made those, man. Nowadays, they're like, you mad, bro? We took the part out of the NyQuil that actually makes the NyQuil work. <laughs> it's crazy I have brand loyalty to a painkiller. I have to admit, like, is there any reason you would... I, I always get Tylenol. I've always considered myself a Tylenol guy. But is there any reason you wouldn't get Advil over Tylenol if you were a free thinker? They're different drugs. Aren't Advil and Tylenol like the same... the same John? No. You can do both? You might want to check that one before you take chat's advice. One's bad for your liver, the other one's bad for your kidneys. <laughs> yeah, but have you ever considered having like a really bad headache is fucking bad for getting the bag? God. It turns out this jump actually is hard. How do you know if your kidneys are bad? Because like when I was sick um, with what I thought might have been food poisoning like three months ago, all of the symptoms of what I had point into either food poisoning or complete kidney failure. 
Your piss was weird? No, my the piss was like the only thing normal about me. <laughs> At that point. You're probably good then. If you're retaining fluid or your eyes turn yellow. Isn't that a liver thing? I'm asking I'm I'm asking in a funny voice, but I'm being serious. Both. Holy cow. It's kind of crazy to think about, like, mankind has kind of conquered physics, but we're just scraping the surface of biology, man. I know it's like, it sounds like copium as like a, someone holding a biology degree, but we fucking, in the last 150 years, we fucking crushed physics, bro, and chemistry. We're like, guess what? Boom. Trains. Cars. Rocket ships. Uh, fucking nuclear power plants. We landed a dude on the moon. We built an international space station. Human biology? We're like, oh, you got this? Here's a pill. You got this? Caught! Sorry, buddy. You're on your own. We did do surgery on a grape, though. You're not wrong. Okay, one second. I'm gonna I'm gonna blow my nose. Yo, great news! My mucus is no longer clear. We're starting to get to the green stuff. Let's fucking go! Is that good? In my course of illness, that's usually good. First couple of days, I start with clear mucus, and then it turns green, and then that's how I know that I'm like almost, I'm, I'm starting to crest over it. Why does blood know that? Because I fucking look at the shit that comes out of my body. Do you look at the toilet paper after you wipe? Yes, I look after the, at the toilet paper after I wipe. It's my poop, bro. <laughs> Do you fold your TP and wipe again? Let me think. No. I take two to three squares, fold, wipe, close, and put into the toilet. Why close? I don't know. It's just the way I've always done it. Never really thought about it that serious. I'm a five-sheeter? I mean, that's crazy. There's people out there that are going, like, three sheets, you wasteful ass. Okay, you're probably using... Like, you're wiping three times as many times if you're using one sheet. Like, it's it all comes out in the fucking wash, bro. Are you a folder or a crumpler? I do a little, like a hybrid theory, I think. A little, a little between a fold and a crumple. Why fold? It's already square. I don't want to risk my finger breaching through the substrate and getting a little dookie on my finger. So even though the shit is already two-ply, I kind of fold it to make it like four-ply. 
really the more layers of protection I can get between my finger and my feces, like, it's the, the, the better. How has your wiping technique changed since the advent of smartphones? Uh, you have uh, ADHD. If your wiping has changed because you're always holding your phone in your hand, you've got to examine your relationship with your smartphone. You just put it down for like 20 seconds and then wipe the, the best way you know how and then pick it back up. There is an epidemic of people in the men's bathroom looking at their phones while they piss. I'm not going to say I've never done it, but I, I kind of, I've reached a, a zen point in my life where I'm like, do I really need to be looking at my phone while I'm pissing in a public bathroom? Like, do I really, like how weak am I that I need that 20 seconds to be saturated with some kind of distraction? But now I see like middle-aged dudes pull up to the urinal, one hand on the phone, just scrolling, the other hand, pss Come on, man. I mean, in your own home, you could do whatever you want, but... What else do you need to be looking at? I don't know, it's just kind of... I think you should make sure... You should have a constant through line to see where your piss is going. Because, like, if you are not hitting the bowl for even, like, half a second... That's a fucked up situation. You've compromised things. Like, if, if ever the stream breaks connection with the bowl, your shoes or your pants or the floor is going to be, like, totally soaked. You know what's troubling sometimes? When you, um... You, you pee... And I'm just, I'm just a normal person like any of you. Sometimes you might end up with a little dribble on the toilet seat or the, around the bowl, right? As a man of, I, I think we live in a society, I take a little toilet paper and I wipe the, the piss off of the bowl. But then, like, sometimes you throw it into the toilet afterwards and it fucking fizzes like you dropped it into sulfuric acid. Am I dying? Like, sometimes you throw it in and it's just like, bloop. And sometimes you throw it in and it's like an Alka-Seltzer tablet. It's like, <laughs> That shit has never happened to me. Maybe I should talk to a doctor. That is not normal. How am I supposed to explain this to a doctor, though? You don't think it could be that, like, the toilet paper is acidic and the piss is normal? <laughs> Are you the alien? I'm just saying, man. Human body is kind of crazy. Probably chemicals collected from wiping the bowl. Maybe it's copium, but that makes me feel good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's probably the toilet bowl cleaner that we use. Guaranteed. You ever see some bits of undigested lettuce in the bowl? As a child, I didn't. As an adult, yeah, yeah, yeah. I get a little lettuce in there from time to time. Not like leaves, but like, you know, maybe like a, a five millimeter piece of, of lettuce. Corn? Corn I, I am able to digest, but lettuce passes right through me for some reason. We're so back. Oh, 
Okay, okay. No! No! Okay, hold. Hold again. It's so much harder than you'd expect. Yes! Climb up the center. Go again. Go again. Yes! What, what the hell is that? We're on, boys. We're on. Okay, okay. <laughs> Whoa! Daddy, chill. A bore. A spiral rivet. Okay, hold. You can take a second to regroup. That thing is going to send you off like a son of a gun, bro. You're right. This is a lock-in moment. Comfortable. Get comfortable. Okay, we go again. We go again. We go again. We go again. That was locked in. Huge. Huge. Lock in, lock in, lock in, lock in. Hold. <laughs> Hold. That was a tactical fall. Get ready to learn it. Dan, I I didn't know what this game was cooking with until this moment. I didn't know it had real physics. I thought it just had climbing. Thank you for the raid. Look at this. Wouldn't it be crazy if I did learn it? Like I showed up one day and I just spoke fluent Mandarin and I did a whole stream in Mandarin. Kermit voice. I'm sick, bro. My nose is congested, okay? Hey, Krusty Jugglers. Thanks for the gifted subscriptions. Thank you. Quirked up white boy does whole stream in Mandarin. Everyone tells him to die. What the hell? Prezo, by the way, I saw your post about the Ludwig subreddit. They do fucking hate your ass, man. What's up with that? Just because you made a, a funny joke on Twitter? People were like, I didn't appreciate this joke? Like, lighten up a bit, man. People on Reddit will always be like, I'm not trying to be toxic, but does anybody else think that, like, this guy should die? I really, really, really like this content creator. Like, I think if we met in real life, we would be best friends. But this person who's actually friends with him is my least favorite person in history, and I wish they would disappear off the face of the planet. Like, it's, it's insane, man. Why do they hate Prezo so much? Well, Prezo tweeted that Ludwig came out as non-binary. 
And then I guess they got excited or offended. And then when they looked it up and it, it wasn't a valid thing that actually happened, they felt betrayed. No, I was holding too long. I was holding too long. I was yapping. What was the original joke? The joke was that Ludwig came out as non-binary, but actually he didn't. <laughs> I can tell the other guys on this podcast hate this guy on the podcast. That yeah, I, that comment happens at every show, man. It's crazy. Anyone else get the vibe that everybody else on the show would just wish this motherfucker they've known for 20 years would stop talking? But then... I went to Justin's stream, and while he was sleeping, he was playing, like, old Rainbow Six videos. And I was, like, listening to my old voice from 2017. And I was like, these motherfuckers hate me and want me to shut up. I was, like, I was singing too much. I was interrupting people. I, my voice was different, and I was saying stuff like, hey, could I get a, could I get a reinforce on this ping? Like, I was talking about the game. I, and I was like, why did these guys ever hang out with me, man? <laughs> what happened? Whoa! Yeah, they definitely wanted to kill my ass. You still interrupt and sing? Yeah, but like, at least I'm funnier now. Back then, I, mm, does anybody have a, a an umpy? Does anyone have a four grippy for an umpy? Hey, oh, watch out, guys. There's a castle on ping. Like, what, what, what the fuck? Who did I think I am, man? Shroud? I used to be a type A streamer. Next, we're going to go to Nibelheim, and I'm going to try to level up my Knights of the Round Materia to level 4, which makes the summon scene take 27 minutes, and no, you can't press the button to actually skip through it, but why would I want to? Next, I'm going to go to... Uh, we got a lot of stuff to do in this video, guys. I got to go to Golden Saucer and win the, win the Chocobo races so I can get a Golden Chocobo. And after we get a Golden Chocobo, we can go get Knights of the Round and Mime from the Materia Caves. I was literally... I spent like 10 years of my life talking like that. Like, what the fuck was... I don't know what happened to me, but I'm glad it happened, man. This is like Jim Carrey after he put on the mask. He was like, bro, fuck Stanley Ipkiss. I'm the mask now. <laughs> Woo! Come on down there. I watched some of your Kerbal Space Program videos and people told me, or uh, you have gone through some stuff voice-wise. Go read the comments for those Kerbal Space Program videos. There were literally people telling me to blank myself. You won't see them now because it's been 10 years. So the top comment is like, guys, guys, we should really be nicer to NL in these videos or he's going to stop making the Kerbal Space Program com uh, co content. Sorry, my, my Wernicke's area is not working today. Woo! Hold. 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 You gotta climb. Insane. Insane tech. Go. So close. So close. So bad. Not so bad. 
Urgh, this game just makes me so mad. It's like a cockadiarrhea from a bull's doo doo. I'd rather eat the rotten asshole of a road killed skunk and drown it with beer. Certified AVGN moment. Ready? Next time. Next time? Valentine, thanks for the gifted subscriptions. Thank you. <laughs> How far have you gotten in this game? You're looking at it, buddy. That's not true. You've made it a little further. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like... You're looking at it, buddy. Let's be honest. Is he even halfway through the game yet? You know what you are? I'm distilling your entire being from one comment down to a meme. I'm, I'm flattening and removing all the nuance from your life. You are the meme of the guy at work who has a thought bubble coming out of his head that is, can't wait to finish work so I can stop looking at work screen and go home and look at home screen. This is the life, man. You, you don't just finish this and then the next thing is going to be even better if anything you know modern life the next thing's probably going to be much worse you should be embracing living in the moment right now hang on i gotta blow my nose Please stop calling this a children's game. This is actually one of the most adult games ever made. Kids are playing Baldur's Gate 3 and getting in arguments on Twitter about mistreatments of their fave. Adults aren't afraid to suffer real adversity. No, Baldur's Gate 3 is actually really hard. It's really hard. Yes, you can beat the final boss by uh, taking an invisibility potion, walking behind him, and then kicking him off the edge. But no, no, it's really hard, bro. It's really hard. Are you crazy? I just walked over here. Didn't you say it wasn't hard yesterday? That was in response to a different comment that served my argument better to represent it thusly, okay? Help. Huge grab. Bad grab, but that was pretty good on the way up. Next time. Next time. This argument, unfortunately, I have portrayed it as a steam train, whereas I am an angry bullet train. So true. Playing dolls with Wojaks again, honey? Baldur's Gate 3, most overrated game. I've never played it. It's probably one of the best games of all time. But that's why it's the most fun game to make fun of. They're suffering from success. A 
Apollo is reporting Swag Thursday has been canceled. Can you vet? I'm not comfortable to say that it's been canceled. I would say that it's on um, furlough right now. Just because, like, me personally, I don't want to show up here and give you, like, a subpar Swag Thursday. Like, sure, I'll phone it in for, like, five hours at work when I'm not feeling well, but I'm not going to call that Swag Thursday. I feel like that's not fair to the brand. I want you to know that when you see the title Swag Thursday, like, we're going to be giving you permission to swag out. And I, I don't mind if you still swag out over this, but I just can't rely on myself to bring the noise like that today, so... I hope you're enjoying it, but I, I, I don't think it's going to be Swag Thursday today, simply because I, my energy is a little diminished. look like a well we're waiting <laughs> you know what's crazy a couple of weeks ago we ordered Papa John's on the pizza box, it says, we proudly serve Pepsi products. Why would you print an embarrassing statement like that on your pizza box? What do you mean you proudly serve Pepsi products, man? Begrudgingly serve Pepsi products as a result of an exclusive brand partnership? Sure, but we proudly serve it? I mean, that just seems like the most transparent lie of all time. wholeheartedly offer Sierra Mist. Oh, you mean Starry? Why Papa John, though? Listen, the Canadian Pizza Wars, it's in kind of like a, it's in a bad place. We don't have the same kind of like capitalist paradise that you guys have in the United States, where if you live in New Jersey, there's like a hundred amazing pizzerias within a 30 minute drive of you. You, we're, we're, we're not spoiled for choice down here. I'm sorry to say. Do you rock with Domino's? Uh, I do not rock with Domino's. I told my Domino's story recently. As a kid, uh, was a skid. No one knew me by name. Crashed my own house party because nobody came. As a kid, uh, Domino's was ass. Then, in like 2007, they were like, we made it better. And I was like, yeah, nice try. And then I ate it, and I was like, whoa, they did make it better. And then, that had been kind of what I've been operating under the assumption of for like 15 years, right? Uh, so, maybe eight months ago, we ordered Domino's, and I ate it, and I was like, they made it bad again. I don't know what happened. Maybe it's just the local franchisee, but... Woo! No good Italian food in the Pacific Northwest either. Little bro's never been to ask for Luigi. <laughs> Come on. No good Italian food in the, in the Pacific Northwest. Are you from Naples? Brother, it's just no disrespect. It's noodles and sauce. You can, that's the beauty of it. You can make it good anywhere. Yeah. Whoop. Chicken parm, not pasta. Oh yeah, you mean uh, adult tendies? Ha <laughs> ha. 
How dare you? <laughs> People love to say there's no good restaurants in X, even when they don't live there. It's true, people, and I, I'm guilty of doing it myself. Like, I've, I've spent some time in Seattle, but how many meals have I eaten there? Probably like 30 meals. I'm like, Seattle food scene is horrible. I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. It is, it's based on my experience, but I'm sure it's probably got some great food. I just don't know where to find it. Toronto clears? I believe that. I believe Toronto has an amazing food scene. We got our first Michelin stars this past year. Vancouver as well. But... I've stopped going out to cool restaurants and started going out to like the white spot instead because they have a, an absolutely crazy kids menu. <laughs> the kids menu goes crazy. I don't know, what's the kids menu like at... Uh, I'm trying to even think of the name of these restaurants. Burdock and Company? What's the, what's the kids' menu like at Burdock and Company? Oh, we have a fucking rhubarb foam that kids seem to like. Oh, really? Does it compete with grilled cheese sandwich, crinkle cut french fries and ketchup? I don't think so. Send it. Send it. Is the concept of a kid's tasting menu funny? Yes. Kids do not care. In my, well, at least my three-year-old does not care. She doesn't care about the art of restaurant touring. That's for sure. Like, we'll go to like a ramen restaurant. I'll be like, what do you want to eat? And she'll be like, french fries. And I'm like, that's tough. <laughs> that's something, I don't know if we can do that. Hey, well, you know, they don't have french fries, but here. They have miso ramen. How does that sound? Oh, you don't want that? Uh, okay, how about shio ramen? Or maybe even shoyu ramen? No, none of that sounds like it's going to hit the spot, huh? How about mm, they got one appetizer, they got gyoza. I'm a shio guy myself, personally. Especially if it's dipped in Mamalicious's Eat Your Ass Oil. Hold, 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 hold. No, it's not right, it's not my cycle. It's not my cycle. Go up the middle. It's not my cycle. Not my cycle. Go up the middle. It's my cycle. Okay. <laughs> okay. Can I tell you, by the way, I've been complaining for a while about oh I, no yapping no yapping no yapping i've been complaining for a while about my laundry coming out of the dryer still a little bit damp and thus requiring extra time or even in extreme circumstances an entire another cycle in the dryer uh, we clean the lint trap i know what you're gonna say i'm a 100 percent lint trap cleaner i vacuumed out the the vents to make sure that it was still good then last time when we came back from vacation I, I was looking at the laundry machine and there was a setting on it called EcoBoost. Then I googled Maytag EcoBoost and it says, hey, here's a little setting that um, makes your dryer worse but makes you feel good about like not destroying the environment. I'm just being honest. I said turn that shit off too sweet and then my shit came out fucking crispy, bro. 
it came out like a like a good samosa. They should really call it Eco Slow. Yes! No! How could you do this to me? And it was also not really too eco, in my opinion. Because my ass had to run the dryer for like three hours to get the same level of dryness that I was getting from like a one hour cycle with no eco boost on. Yes. Hold, hold, just hold. Hold and go again. We gotta go faster on that next section. Hold. <laughs> next time, next time, next time, next time, hold. And I gotta be honest with you, I'm really like, uh... I'm an all or nothing guy when it comes to the dryer. Like my ass is not running one cycle in the dryer and then taking the clothes out and hanging them up. I'm either going air dry from the very start or I'm making sure that they're done once they're, they're out of the dryer. Like it's just, I'm not spending my whole day doing laundry like this is Little House on the Prairie, right? Like we got, we got stuff to do. Not, not my cycle. That's fine, go back. I thought that was it, I thought that was it. Hold. <laughs> Hold. Woo. You think your European audience knows what a dryer is? Yeah? They all went to university on the taxpayer's dime, right? I'm sure they're familiar with the concept of a clothes dryer, whether or not they have access to one themselves. Just go by feel, bro. No! No, okay, we're going hold. Just hold on this one. We go all the way back. This is a patience situation. Oof. Okay, we, we calm down for a second. We blow our nose. <laughs> and then we go again. One more time. The water feels good on my body. It's crazy like to go swimming. And I've been doing my fair sh share of swimming probably since like 2021 now. But like, I probably did not swim in a swimming pool from, I'm gonna say like 2005 until like 2021. You forget, if, it, if you haven't been swimming for a long time, you forget the joy that comes from being in the water, bro. It just feels nice. Were you in jail? No, it's just like when you get older, the opportunity to swim... Like, it doesn't present itself to you. When you're a kid, like, some, you go to a friend's birthday party or something, they're like, hey, check it out, we're going to the YMCA to swim. Or, like, you know, you're, you're staying with your grandparents at, like, a Howard Johnson hotel, and they've got, like, an outdoor pool that's three degrees Celsius or something like that. As an adult, you really got to make that work for yourself if you want to go swimming. Did you not go to the beach, though? Yeah, but, like, going to the beach, it's not really swimming. 
you do like some wading and maybe you you like submerge yourself and you, you swim for like three minutes or something like that but and then like I don't want to say that um, like organic nature is worse than artificial nature but like swimming pools are kind of goaded the water can be climate controlled um, there's no seaweed grabbing at you like the ghosts of Davy Jones pirate crew uh, you don't walk out into the swimming pool and then all of a sudden there's like a hundred meters stretch of sharp rocks Whee. swimming pools solve some problems for sure No sharks, yeah? No manta rays? The chlorine smell actually comes from when chlorine binds to urine, so anytime you smell it, you know someone peed in the pool. I'm just gonna be honest with you, I wish people wouldn't pee in the pool, but it doesn't bother me. Knowing that the pool is full of piss doesn't bother me at all. I just have stronger mental than that, no disrespect. The best of my knowledge, I don't believe anyone's ever died of, like, piss poisoning from swimming. I feel like, you know, it's kind of a, a not a nice thought, but there's a lot of fucking molecules in that, in that swimming pool. I'm sure I'm coming across piss now and then, but, like, what do I care? Ooh. Okay, I was glancing. You can tell. Would you swim in a pool that's 50% piss? No. I'm pretty sure though, like if you're in a pool with 20 people and two of them piss, that pool is 99% water. That's a very small volume of piss compared to like a very big volume of water. Did you see how graceful that was? <laughs> <laughs> Holy smooth with it, bro. Not even close. Even piss is mostly water. Yeah, but it's like tainted water. That's bad. Like with the life straw, you know, you can like piss and then you can drink the piss with the life straw and it filters it down to just water. That's still piss. It can keep you alive, but that's piss water. Maybe not in a chemistry sense, but in like a spiritual sense. It carries the, the essence of piss. The seed of piss resides within it. Oh, you work on your grip strength, bro. You definitely can't do that with a life straw. I gotta call my doctor. Maybe that's why my shit's all carbonated. Hold. It's kind of crazy a swimming pool is like 6,000 liters. It's 60,000 liters? 60, that's, cr maybe 6,000 is like a kiddie pool. Sixty, 60 million? That's only six cubic meters? I mean, that seems like pretty big. Isn't that like 18 feet deep, 18 feet long, and 18 feet wide? 
That's, that seems like a fucking... That seems like a perfectly sizable swimming pool, man. No? Wait a second. Okay, hey. Teach me. This is a teachable moment. That would be 36 meters cubed. Okay. It's like two by two by two. Two by two by two. Two meters deep is still pretty deep, bro. Now, two meters long is not very long. I would know that would be eight. You're absolutely right. Shoot is like 1.7, 1.7, 1.7 or something. Two meters by three meters and one meter deep. See, now we're cooking. Hold. Hold. Has Coke always been your go-to soda? Uh, no. As a kid, I drank whatever was in the house. Then, uh, when I figured out it was bad for me, I said I'm never going to drink my calories again. That lasted 18 months until I made it to college, and I said, why would anyone ever drink a soda? It doesn't make sense. Three nights a week, I would drink $10 beers. Not a $10 beer, 10 beers that cost a dollar each. And I would still be like, why would you ever have one root beer? Like, it doesn't make sense. It's only the, the reintroduction of diet sodas has been a relatively recent um, addition into the ecosystem. I miss loony beers. I'm not up on the times. Didn't Doug Ford bring it back? Wasn't that like the, the number one pillar of his campaign? Lamal? <laughs> I, I was, I'm being serious. It flopped. I was working at the LCBO during that time. Nobody did that shit. I guess he was like, make your beers a dollar. And people were like, we can't do that. We'll go out of business. And he was like, ah, shit. Well, nevertheless. The breweries came out and said, we can't make beer for a dollar. I mean, that makes sense. But can't you just do like what they do for corn? And be like, sell the beers for a dollar and the government will pay like an extra 50 cents? was working at a waitress in a cocktail bar when that shit happened. Nobody did that. Sorry, I'm going turbot mode. I think drinking water is kind of a scam. They say like, oh, when you're sick, you got to drink a lot of water. And then my body's like just converting it straight to mucus. Like if I just dehydrated myself and got desiccated, I, my nose wouldn't be running so much. You need the mucus, though? I guess sometimes, like, the human body must get pissed when we have colds, right? Like, if the human body actually could think. Ignore the phrasing there. Because, like, you get sick, and your body's like, boom, fever, don't worry, we got this. And you're like, guess what? Ibuprofen. Fever comes down. Your body's like, what the fuck, bro? And you're like, okay, um... Runny nose. We're gonna we're gonna get this bitch out of your nose then. I see how it is. We'll compromise, we'll compromise, and you're like boom. Something that dries up all my snot. And you're like, bro, I'm trying what am I supposed to do? We only got a certain number of possible apertures to push this bitch out through. And you're like, sorry, I have to go to work today. Sorry, the the people at the restaurant need someone to tell their food order to and then bring the food from the little window that's eight feet away to your table. So I, I, would love, I would love to care about my health, but I've been... I simply can't afford to take more time off. 
That's not it. There's also getting yelled at for something that's not your fault. That's true. I'm not against the, the servers, by the way. You got me all backwards. Body be like, fine. All that shit goes to your lungs. Enjoy pneumonia. Peace. So true. Did you see that Walmart might start charging to use self-checkout? If that's true, and I'm doubting that it's 100% valid because of the fact that it confirms... Like, it, it makes me so mad immediately that my gut reaction is to be skeptical, which I think is healthy. If that is real, they're cooked. They're gonna charge me to steal salami? It's the exact backwards way that it should be, bro. You should get a discount for using the self-checkout. Don't even get me started, by the way. When I'm at the grocery store... I know! I haven't seen the video essays. I understand it's a corporate tax write-off, okay? If I got a $90 grocery order, and the cashier says, would you like to add... Two dollars for like, you know, underprivileged pets. I'm like, sure, add two bucks to the bill. When the robot does it, I'm like one bad day away from smashing that machine to bits. If you don't have the audacity to hire a human being to ask for the donation, and you actually just have like a little UI element pop up that's like, would you like to give us two extra dollars? You can seriously suck me. It's like that at McDonald's, too. Yes, but I will say at McDonald's, I, um, I typically round up to the nearest dollar for Ronald McDonald House. If my order was like 1803 and it was a 97 cent roundup, I might think twice. But if it's like 1872, I'm like, here you go. Here's 28 cents. Oh no, it's getting cold again. It's 76 degrees in my office. 